Did you know that according to statistics, only a small percentage of you who watch our videos are actually subscribed? Do you enjoy our content? If so, we encourage you to subscribe to our channel. Your support means a lot to us and it helps YouTube's algorithm in promoting more of our mental health content. Hey there, Psych2Goers, and welcome back to another video. Thank you all so much for the love and support that you give us. It enables us to dive deeper into everyday psychology with you. So, shall we? Are you concerned about someone's mental health? Do you find yourself at a loss over how to react when the topic does come up? Well, they would never want to force a reaction out of you, it can be uncomfortable to watch you struggle with what to say when they know you mean well. There are many ways to be supportive without overstepping boundaries or taking on more than you can handle. It's important to help you understand from a psychology-oriented perspective the thoughts and emotions behind anxiety so you can be well-equipped to be supportive. This is meant as a self-improvement guide and should not be used as self-treatment. If you or someone you know is struggling with anxiety or any mental health issues, be sure to seek help. Having a supportive environment does help, but professional guidance and advice goes a long way. With that said, here are seven reassuring things to say to someone with anxiety. Number one, you have my attention, or I'm listening. These phrases can mean a lot to someone with anxiety. They're often too afraid to bring up anxiety-related topics because they believe their anxiety makes it hard to talk to them or difficult to be around. So hearing this is incredibly reassuring. It helps to make them feel encouraged so they can bring it up without hesitation in the future. This makes it feel like whoever is listening truly cares about what they have to say, and it makes them want to return the favor whenever you may need to talk. Two, what can I do to help you? Do their plants need watering? Is there anything they're craving for lunch? By asking the person in distress what might help, you're letting them take control of the situation. Ask them to get creative if they can. Keep in mind though that some people can actually become more anxious in the wake of decision-making. Sometimes it can feel like one more thing to worry about, but it still gives them a chance to ask for anything they might need. Number three, hey, let's go for a walk. We can talk about it, or we can just get some fresh air. A change of environment is a choice tool for interrupting the cycle of anxiety. It distracts the brain from its worries. Focusing on the world around helps create distance between the person and their thoughts, which ultimately makes them easier to talk about and to let go. If they don't feel like talking, at least they'll have something else to occupy their mind with. Number four, is it okay if I give you a hug? Consent is key, even when it comes to hugs hand-holding, and other innocent touches. They can all be triggering to someone with anxiety. Plus, there are a lot of people who just don't like to be touched, so it's always important to ask first. Sometimes a hug can be incredibly comforting during a difficult time, like a physical reminder that you're not alone. During extreme anxiety, though, being touched can make one feel trapped and claustrophobic, so it's always appreciated when someone asks before going in for a hug. It reminds them that they're in control of the conversation. Number five. I'm here for you, no matter what is happening. If you're going to offer to be there for someone who battles anxiety, be honest about what you're able to do or be ready to be open to whatever comes your way. It's nice to hear that someone is on their side, but it can't help if the encouragement is conditional. To promise support only to disappear when things get tough can make it difficult to trust those who make this pledge. It can make them wary of such promises in the future when they have ample evidence backing their hesitations. Authentic support is especially reassuring when you're able to give it unconditionally, building their trust and self-esteem. Number six, would advice be helpful or should I just listen? Hugging, joking, and advice giving might be your first instinct when you see someone you love in distress, but people with anxiety sometimes feel overwhelmed and even intimidated by the constant fire of suggestions. They can react intensely when someone starts spouting out suggestions before they've even had a chance to finish talking. It might be hard, but you have to fight the urge to be a friend sometimes. Instead, asking this question puts the person with anxiety in control of what happens next, which in itself may relieve some of their anxious edge. And number seven, I don't know what to say, but I'm here for you. Honesty is always the best policy. Anxiety can be a difficult subject matter, so it's okay if you don't know what to say or how to react. Honestly, sometimes even they don't know what to say, 
but it's refreshing and reassuring to be genuine during such a vulnerable conversation. Friends and family have admitted that they fear saying the wrong thing or making situations worse, but that the important thing for them isn't always what you say, but to let them know that you're there for them, no matter what. We hope we were able to give you a little insight into some of the ways that you can show your support to those living with anxiety. If you suffer from anxiety, how do you feel about the points mentioned in this video? Let us know in the comments below. If you found this video insightful, be sure to hit the like and subscribe button and share it with someone who might benefit from it too. As always, thanks so much for watching and we'll see you soon.